Can you tell us about uh, Malcolm Subban first of all? The, as far as him as a person or the, in, the injury, yeah, I, I wish I could tell you more. Um, we're, we're hopeful that it's not significant. Um, and there's some optimism that it's not, but we still don't have uh, the information. He'll see more, he'll get more looks today from the doctor. Um, and it could be very simple and it's pointing that way. So we stay hopeful that that's the case. To see him go down on the first that's tough. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. You f I feel for him. Um, you know, as I did on the first goal against, we left him shooter wide open. But um, but yeah, I do. It's it's a bummer for him. He's his new energy in life and opportunity for him. And so I just hope that uh, again, it, it, we don't have the answer. So it, you know, we can still hang on to some optimism right now that this is really short. Uh, but we'll know. Um, really quick here if that's the case uh, as he goes through some examinations today. So you're going to go with UPL tomorrow? We we'll see. Uh, we'll see how I feel then. Uh, I don't want to make that decision today because he hasn't he hasn't been with us for three days. They've been going through COVID down there. Um, so he hasn't had the practice time uh, because of that. So um, not sure on that yet, but uh, could be could be the case. How hard was it? How hard has it been? The past couple of years, to just to find a rhythm going back to get the hip problem and keep these legs. The season's quite short, and last season, this season there's been kind of a pause. They've never really had any results. That's hard. You know, when you do, it, it is a lot for any player, especially at this level when they have no experience at it yet. Being the pro level for for him being at the pro level, to have to deal with. You know, with uh, preoccupation of injuries, um, it is it's a challenge. Uh, you can only hope that guys don't lose their confidence within that, um, or they regain it quicker. Uh, and if you can get to the other side of it, it's you know, it's 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 frustrating times, but it can be useful uh, moving into the future if you can survive it. And he's he's surviving it. He's staying competitive and working through it and it's not it doesn't seem to to affect the fiber of him the competitiveness and the outlook that he's had from from uh, day one uh, you're not a historical stretch here of ineptitude defensively and I, I just think sometimes different things happen in different games when you look at these last three you give up 20 goals I mean does anything jump out at you or is it just different things try to put your finger in the cycle well no, no, there are just little, little details, little details. We think, you know, I've talked a lot about um, this, the, 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 the negative side is what you've said. We've given up too many goals. Uh, the positive side is we're scoring a lot of goals as well. And that is very important. That is you run the contradiction of, as I've spoken of many times, if you just try to win one nothing, two nothing, you never improve. It's easier now to actually refocus and time will tell to pay attention to the defensive details, which I think the bulk, if you want to bulk our goals, it's paying attention to little subtleties. Um, as the first goal the other night, it just two two guys overskate the coverage area, just overskated it. It's just that simple. So uh, you know, the question, are they thinking offense? Are they ready to jump on offense? But in any event, it was just a focus and concentration tweak. Uh, the other tweak would be to be a little bit more aggressive uh, and anticipate when to be aggressive to jump. Uh, so, so, yes, we are going to turn some attention and have turned attention toward that. Today's meeting was geared toward that, um, not allowing the opponent easy opportunities. We're scoring enough goals to win, and we're not winning. So, uh, but I do feel, you know, the time, um, you mentioned a lot of goals. You pull out, when I look at them, you pull out all the empty net goals again. So those, you know, those are goals after the fact. Uh, you pull out some of the special teams and you look at it and you say, okay, here's the five on five. 
what what are the bulk areas that we can work on to close that out, and that's it. As far as the as far as giving up some shorthanded goals, those are focus and concentration, uh, and players are hearing from us in regard, um, and they move into the as we move along, things move into to the unacceptable category as you progress your team through a season. You know, I've said pr plenty of times you've got to give your guys some rope to to uh, discern and. But if they're not learning from it, that's they're going to hear from us more, and they're going to face more repercussions. And that's kind of where we're at with it. Um, if that brings some clarity, I guess. Could I ask? So uh, it sounds like no, but I'll ask: are, Do you change your philosophy at all? No, philosophy has not changed in the sense of um, you know teams that can out teams in this league that are great outscore their mistakes. It's just that simple, you know. They they do. They they, you know. You could we could show film of the top teams in the league making similar errors or even worse errors than we see, but they overcome them. They put the other team on their heels offensively. They command respect. The the teams back off, so they're not getting as many chances, uh, you know, even to capitalize against them because of the fear factor of of what they do. So the best teams in the league can score can score goals and really make up for their mistakes. So we have to develop that. We, we have to keep becoming a better team and have to develop an, an enhanced ability to score. Like I said, defending is, um, you know, it can be lost in this case when you don't have a lot of experience of time and, and experience in the league. Those details can be lost because, it, the, you know, the more experienced player discerns situation to situation and, and has a better focus in each one of those. Our, our guys, we've got a lot of younger guys out there that are doing well offensively. Uh, and then they slip, and they don't, you know, in the, really in their career they haven't had to pay attention to defense until they came to the NHL. And so if I hammer too hard on that, especially at the start of the year, we're going to lose that offensive. It's just, it's automatic. You, you, you concentrate on one, you're going you're gonna to be. So I didn't, and I, and I still want to make sure, you know, we don't lose that ability to score because once we do and we start losing games one to nothing and two to one, and hold teams down, and the questions are going to be the same. Coach, you haven't scored. You can't score. Your guys aren't scoring. So it's it's this is just I see this as part of the process, Paul. Um, and I mentioned lots of times you have to coach in the moment, and we're coaching in the moment. Mike mentioned, and you've mentioned how many goals we've given up. That's the moment, and it's right there for them to see on video. And these are the things they have to correct. And it's a little bit, like I said, of you correct this, and because you don't have a lot of experience through the lineup, and something else is going to slip next week. It's it's just it's the NHL, and when you keep correcting, hopefully that becomes an accumulation of experience, and that's what I don't want to sacrifice. So, yeah, this attention to detail in a certain area, a specific area, has to go today, um, and it'll go there. Benefit from stability behind them. I'm looking at the numbers now. You've had eight goalies in your 52 games. Yeah, that's a lot. It is a lot. It is a lot. I mean, um, I'm sure that's a lot when you compare it to the league. And the only thing I can say on that, John, is is any time you you expose to vulnerabilities, it's an opportunity for you to actually improve and get better. And so, whatever challenges we've had as a as an organization, as a team, as a coach. Uh, we, I have to f stay focused on that and, uh, and approach it that way. So when things do stabilize, we actually have a really good foundation. Uh, so we got to keep working. We have to keep working on that foundational element. So when things do stabilize around us, and they will, that that we will be in the right place. Um, so we have to just keep building and building and not allow what, what you mentioned to be be a distraction. It just can't. Um, can correct what we can correct, take care of what we can take care of. So our focus will remain on that. Um, if that answers, I don't know, John, if that answers your... Ron, based on what you said a few minutes ago, is it, is it um, fair to assume that you have the best Yeah, he, he, I mean, he has to learn from that. The, the other night, I will say this. We never should be moving a puck back because we moved it back in front of four opponent players there. They could, they could pressure it. We needed depth in the zone at that point. 
So he was handcuffed and didn't make the right decision, and, and uh, we've seen that. So, again, he, he has to learn from that. He has to get better at that. Um, that's, again, moving, you know, not moving the right direction. Um, what I'll make, as far as decisions I'll make, you know, you, you that power play could have had three goals, three more goals. Um, you know, whether it been Florida, Victor hitting the post, and Tomer, a couple of one-timers with some great saves and rebounds for Skinny sitting there. So, you know, uh, you have to weigh cost and benefit of, of that situation, um, the overall of it. And that's the challenge. It's a challenge for me making that decision. You take them off, you got to put somebody there. And is that the right move? Uh, and that's something we'll continue to weigh. I, you know, on that play, I think there was a second mistake by uh, by Dahls. He could have waited in front of the net and patient. You know, I think the um, you, sure you'd love to see guys get back, uh, Paul, obviously. But but if Dahls made the mistake on the first play, he was on his way back, and he tried to overcompensate for that. Like I've said, and he made a second mistake. He could have just held the net front after the shot and. He would have been the guy back. He he even vacated the net front again. I think because of he couldn't control the energy after making the first mistake. So you can get into all the detail of it, but control your energy there. You know you made a mistake. What happened inside you? Did you overreact? Did you did you regain calm and uh, refocus so you could read the situation? And and that's a learner learning point for for him in that situation. Um, I'd have to watch it again close. When we entered the zone, Paul, where we were, we should have pushed for depth, which meant our forwards should have been going deeper, which meant they got caught doing the right thing. Now they're back checking late. And the Carolina players were in that motion going toward the puck, so there was a tremendous gap and discrepancy there. That's why I say to go back on that play to Dahls when it should have went a little deeper at that point probably complicated the question you're asking. Is the tag a possibility for he is a possibility, yeah. Again, I'll, I won't, I didn't talk to him after practice, and uh, I'll wait till tomorrow's morning skate to kind of get an inventory on how guys feel. And the same thing I said with UPL, just see how he feels. Um, obviously, he's been off for a few days. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.